fourth speaker has spent the last 18 years as a researcher and professor of genetics in Ottawa, uh, Washington, D.C., and Calgary. He recently left academia to co-found a DNA sequencing and analysis company in Calgary. Please welcome Dustin Hittel. Two things that make me feel a little old here. Uh, first, the average age of the speaker and the, the fact that I thought 12-point font was good enough for me to read something. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what this goes. There you go. So in thinking about uh, the theme of uh, uh, Calgary Patakata 37, I naturally went to Google for ideas. And surprisingly, <laughs> this gave me some clues about how to weave next into a visual and narrative and even an identity and talk about myself, which I generally dislike. And so what I'd much rather talk about is science. <laughs> and how it was really crystallized for me by shows like Star Trek, The Next Generation, Star Trek in general, TNG for fans, because for me it described an aspirational future where science is a character, even a protagonist, and provided the, actually the inspiration for my uh, first tattoo, which is a Klingon. Um, so, uh, clearly my love of Star Trek has uh, spanned many years and generations in my household. This is the only picture of my kids I'm allowed to show tonight. Um, as one of my assume, I was a pretty big computer nerd, if you can believe it. Uh, and into the sciences, particularly the sciences which sought to improve the quantity and quality of people's lives. Uh, you know, the aspirational sciences. And for me, that science was genetics, and actually the uh, inspiration for my second tattoo, which is DNA. Yes, my branded geek. Um, <laughs> and my love of computers and genetics really came together in university using the next step <laughs> computer, uh, where I looked at, you know, DNA sequences in the computer and came to this profound realization that DNA and computer code are both forms of information. And so after completing my PhD, uh, I moved to Washington, D.C. with my new wife, had my kids there, and worked with an amazing community of people in the sort of rare disease, muscular dystrophy, uh, something called mitochondrial disease community. And it's something which I continue to do today. Pause. <laughs> so uh, during my time in D.C., actually, I witnessed the development of some, a really cool technology called Next Generation DNA Sequencing Technology, which in, in, the basic idea is instead of taking your whole genome together and reading it all at once, you break it into small little bits and then throw it into a computer to reassemble it. And it was actually based on the early algorithms that I learned on this next step computer. And so I'm gonna jump into science talk here for a second. So how big is the genome? It's three billion uh, bases big, so three billion letters, imagine that. Uh, it's like about 40 pallets of paper if you wrote it out. To get an accurate sequence, we have to sequence it 40 times. So that ends up being about 120 pallets of paper and to break it into small little bits and, and, and sequence it, we have to shred it up. And so I was fortunate to just be at a conference in San Diego at the Radio Children's Hospital where they actually had the world record for sequencing a human genome, which is 15.5 hours, which is actually, sorry, uh, which is remarkable. And they described it as the world's, uh, solving the world's largest jigsaw puzzle. And why this is relevant is because it moves sequencing into an actual thing where we can act like, it's like a clinical test. So naturally, when we came back to Calgary, uh, one of the first things we did with our handy dandy next seek sequencer and our sequencing chicken was actually to upgrade the software and sequence a human genome in what was actually probably the Canadian record time. Don't hold me to that. It's actually one of three that we've actually done in the month of May. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. And so, uh, so this is what's next to genome sequencing. In my lifetime, uh, since uh, the early aughts where I did my PhD, we sequenced the human genome, multiple model organisms, Neanderthals, Denisovans, 1,000 genomes, 10,000 genomes. Or there's countries like UK that are actually doing million genomes now. So the technology has really moved on quite quickly. And what's really coming next with this technology looping back to Star Trek, the, the, the tricorder, which really started it all, was that we're really moving into this, this, this future where we're actually surpassing a lot of the technology of Star Trek. And we are in the midst of this fourth great industrial revolution where the gap between digital, physical, biological is actually shrinking. Now, to the personal part, which I dislike, if they don't have my notes, um, as sort of a next-oriented person, um, I am, you know, into exercise and into experience, and I love the sort of serenity and peace of mind that exercise gives me, and the fact that it allows me to access 
amazing places that only being physically fit can give you access to. And, and coming back to Calgary with my family, I was uh, able to combine my sort of vocation and navigation uh, with exercise and genetics into a career where I became some of an expert in the exercise of genetics, specifically on the exercise of uh, sort of the genetics of muscle size and strength and how muscle can adapt to exercise, but can also respond to injury. And so, <laughs> being the kind of person I am, I made it pretty far in life without a major injury. And so around 40, unfortunately, luck ran out, and I got a, a, a life-altering injury to my leg requiring internal fixation. And unfortunately for me, in the hospital, I actually got a blood clot, which actually damaged my heart. And it's taken many sort of years for it to get better. And, and interesting, at least to me, because that's where I go, is I actually knew prior to my surgery that I actually have two interesting variants in my genome. One which leaves me predisposed to blood clots, and one which leaves me predisposed to uh, abnormal heart rhythms. Might be having a little one right now. Um, and so, mostly benign, but when they come together, they actually contributed to my, to my injury. And um, had I come to this realization earlier, I probably would have left my academic career before I did, because um, despite my romantic view of science, it was not enjoyable to me. Uh, it was, in fact, a little bit toxic, and even worse, it, unlike the post-scarcity society of Star Trek, it was not a meritocracy for me, and it was not based on that sort of thing. And so further, um, is the word? a little more personal, but had I not tried not hang in my academic career so long, I probably could have saved my marriage. And I have it sort of written here in my calendar between paper review and fixing the headlights on my car. Um, so the first time in my life, I really didn't know what came next. Now, if you're me, and I'm me, um, the first thing I did was play around with my genetic data on my computer in the R statistical program and generate a Kandinsky painting from my uh, genome sequence. Uh, but then, you know, start thinking about why, you know, sometimes the thing that we're, we need to be looking for next is actually right in front of us. So for me, it was taking uh, genetics out of the lab into the public. And so I checked my privilege, thought about all the amazing people I know in my life, uh, in the athletic world and in the uh, uh, science world, and bring it together and to do something good. And that good was to use genetics and use DNA to help uh, identify uh, and diagnose and treat, if possible, and bring the community around the rare disease community. So my final slide, um, Really what's next for me is to use genetics for good, to, to help diagnose disease, help to diagnose appropriate medications, help people uh, with uh, newborns identify diseases that can treat. And unlike Dr. Hibbard, not look for the evil gene, <laughs> but to create a, a future, an aspirational future using science and for the first time in a long time, be excited about what's coming next. Thank you very much.